It's yeah. more for like a chill vibe yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like, like the amount of times we've like chatted to you boys now. Doing a Zoom just feels like... Yeah, when you know people. Like kind of back to like, square one. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, it's just business. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like another Zoom call. It's like after the after the chat's done, <laughs> sometimes you're just like... I feel like a man. Some of the guests, it's I like... Know, yeah, that's what I'm It's the first about. time we've chatted to them. Some of them will hang on there and be like, oh, thanks Something for that. That was really great. And some of them were just like, thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. 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 Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you want the little aftercare. The yeah, little moment yeah. where you're like, so did you enjoy that? Anyway, like also, because I like to be able to like, yeah, stop the Not thing. Not have to be on. Yeah, and then yeah. just be like, yo, anyway, before you on. go, just wanted to say, I like your record or like whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm always off. <laughs> yeah. I haven't yet to be turned on. We've had a few where like we've chatted to them and stuff and then we've stopped the recording and said, thanks for that. And they go, no, no, no worries. And then it's like another half an hour and you're like, Fuck, that would have been a really conversation. You, yeah. Yeah. you wish you switched it back on. Yeah, yeah. But I think a, my, my approach thing. would always be yeah, just like ki- or keep it rolling and then be like, we're gonna we're gonna say that we've stopped it, but like if any of this get, <laughs> yeah. if any of this is good, we'll, That's put, we'll actually, make yeah, bonus. I shouldn't stop recording. I should be like, thanks, man. See ya. All right, we're done recording now. It's just still says recording. Yeah, at least you're still gonna get that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can always the... get to the very end of it and then be like, hey, you mind if we just do the last half hour on like a like a B side extra thing or yeah, like whatever? Yeah. And then they're like, oh yeah, sure. Or, no, I that's said some not shit. a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. unless there was some red hot stuff you've talked about well, or that's it's it, something yeah. that they, they don't want out to the public. Yeah. Like our last I'm chat sure was with this band. Oh, we toured with them and they were fucked. I mean, yeah. Look, the thing is, yeah, it is. It is sometimes bands do like the chance to be able to be like to yeah get to the end and then when they're stopped, be like, all right, now I'm gonna tell you a story that I wasn't going to tell yeah. you yeah. we'd be like oh you, you name drop you even hear Off it in the podcast record kind they, of like, stuff. they yeah. say oh there's someone this story involves someone that I won't name and then they get to the end of the podcast and they're like oh, I'm going to tell you who it was about yeah. <laughs> yeah. we've had that before that's too nice. we've like, had that in oh, person heaps this? as well yeah, yeah. But it was we knew that Blink would coming back fully knew that Blink were coming back confirmed from? from Tom's mouth from someone that will tell you after we've Posted yeah. this recording after this. <laughs> after this. But actually, he was just like, we, we didn't eat anything. And he was up, he's like, so Tom told me this. And we're like, what? Because he had a blink tattoo on his leg. And he was like, Tom saw it, he's like, came up and he's like, just so you know, I'm back in blink and we've got new music coming soon. This was like, like, like everybody so watching cool. that now, someone else. Tom who told said to that this to guy who then told us like a week later. Yeah. Wow. And it hadn't been announced yet. And we were just both like, what so was we're crazy. sitting on gold. But, uh. <laughs> what was crazy though was like how a bunch of people like actually deliberately leaked that. I can't remember what it yeah. was. Someone was angry at Blink about cancelling something and then they found out this thing and then they leaked it. And so about a week before, like AJ Matter was like tweeting about it and being like, yeah, Blink's coming back. We all know. So all the shit was like out there and then they were the band was like fully denying it and then they finally confirmed yeah. it and stuff. And it was like, that was one that everyone was talking about for weeks leading up to it. Well, they'd been like, posting nostalgia photos yeah. and everyone was getting yeah. sus and I genuinely didn't know if I should buy into it. I was like, I mean, they've been a band for a long time. Like, yeah. I, like, I, I didn't really think anything of it because I was like, yeah, they've been a band for a while. This is kind of nice to see these old photos and stuff like up, that. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think anything of it. Also, but they're baiting like, people. <laughs> they know that when they post a photo of the original three of them that people click on it. Yeah. They know that when they post a photo of new blink it gets less reception yeah like, they're, they're, they're just baiting engagement really they didn't but they got back together you know what's the funniest one was like of all people fucking like Nick Jonas leaked the My Chem reunion did you hear about that no when My Chem got back together there was a tweet from Nick Jonas being like my Chemical Romance is rehearsing in the studio next door to us. This oh, is not fuck, a drill. I did hear this. I didn't know it was yeah. him. And I was like, bro, you are like Disney Channel famous, <laughs> motherfucker. And you're out here leaking the return of the biggest emo band of all time. Like, do you know how disrespectful that is? Like, fuck biggest you. Biggest emo band of all time, didn't he? Yeah. 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 He's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. He's like, Disney's He's like, got my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can do whatever the hell I want here. I got Mickey Mouse on my side. You so you are famous enough to know that that's the wrong thing to do. Like, imagine if, imagine if Gerard Way was like, Jonas Brothers are back together. Like that would have been that would have been be pissed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Although maybe he'd just be like, oh, it's great, great PR. Like fuck it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And surely they weren't like <laughs> trying to emo. Cred, they fuck they it. had like a year of build up before they got back together too. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe they like kind of played into the whole. I don't know. They yeah, could have even it. pop next door and be like, oh, hey, Nick Jonas, how you going? We are My Chemical <laughs> Romance. <laughs> we are not back together. I am from Disney, and <laughs> they're like, cool. You want to tweet about <laughs> us? Wait, wait, like, <laughs> yeah, it was set up. It just or like, like, he walks past, walk past him. <laughs> I'm just imagining him walking past the rehearsal studio and it says, like, my physical seduction. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> just fucking fake naming everything. Shut up. 
No, I like that. <laughs> well, that, oh? that sounds like the predator. So <laughs> <laughs> don't say that about Ricky. It's like, a, it's, like it's, a, it's a small predator. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about five and a half foot. Pretty, pretty All right, which one of you is lasting the longest in predator? Oh, he's lasting the longest in bed. In... Who lasts the longest in bed? <laughs> no, you're up against. Well, you're last in the world time we all sex. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna survive the longest? I mean, I've seen all the movies, so I know the strats. But I feel like my physical attributes will not carry me very far. Are we rolling right now? Oh, we've been rolling. Oh, we've been rolling. Right. Have we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, always rolling. I'm so. I don't know if I just take you seriously. No, it's. <laughs> you look at the thing. See the little red button that says recording. We literally just had this conversation. Yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> that was about what happens after. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah we're we're on the whole time, mate. <laughs> That's why I didn't say who leaked the blink thing to us because we're actually rolling. Yeah. Uh, Shit. Now, now I'm at, now I'm actually questioning everything I've just. Said. <laughs> Dan, you haven't said anything, Dan. You haven't said anything. Oh, so bad, casual you're mode. Fired. Dan is Nick Jonas, enemy number one. So my first <laughs> official <laughs> question. <laughs> Disney's after my Dan. Official question. Yes. Is who would last the longest against Predator? Well, do you guys know what to do against Predator? It's been a long time. It's been a while, to be oh, honest. Oh, dude, go and watch the first Predator. Yeah. The, well, yeah, yeah stop there. Predator, <laughs> 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 I, no, do you watch the last one? The, yes, no, that was that actually was the one, yeah, the one that came out a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, wait. it was called Prey. Oh, oh Prey! No, yeah, Prey is great. The See, last when you Predator saw, was. <laughs> we saw that in the movies yeah, and left away. That, that one was funny. Ooh, oh, wait. Was that, that was like the worst dialogue in any movie ever. Oh, I mean, like, credit to them for trying something, but when you try to put like mental, like mental disability or like whatever you want to put it, it's like when you put that as like, they are the hero, they are Superman in this movie. It's like, I don't know if you guys understand what you're talking about at all. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, like. Like no no disrespect, but yeah, read between the lines and no, don't Prey try to was put sick that. though. Prey Dude, was great. Prey was awesome. I forgot about that because yeah, that, that was that was one of the things I watched during COVID. So it was so just good. like you know, one in one eye out the other. Is that the one? <laughs> Back is Prey into the, the one where they're like tied it into like some kind of Native American yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's bad. No, no, it's, so it's awesome. awesome. Oh, it's, oh, okay, so it's great. No, because now I think I remember I mean, that it's, people saying it was great. Like every other movie that comes out now, that's like a soft reboot or a sequel, or whatever. It's basically the first movie again, but it works because it has enough going on and like and it enough, had, like, enough like little hints to the original. Like other yeah. movies have been like, oh, and that's where that thing came from. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was sick. No, you still haven't answered the fucking question. <laughs> well, I think well, no, it's me because nobody else knows what to do. So, how do you survive yeah, against predator? I don't. It's been a very long time. Yeah. Well, you can either like hide. Like use camouflage. You can try and fight predator. You can't fight him. None well, of us. Predator, 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 predator can, can fight him. Is, is, <laughs> we live in Australia. We don't have Goldilocks. Right. Yeah. We don't have guns, and we don't. How's have, his sense like, of smell? Pretty good, I'd imagine. Yeah. Don't know if I can. No, it's I like don't think uh, it's ever infrared. really referred to. Yeah. Oh, that's right. No, yeah. I, I can. I remember the predator vision. The mud yeah. scene. Yeah. yeah. Dude, all, all, that's exactly. I just like the mud. Like judging chilling, me right now. Like, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe I just get in the spa, well. turn it up to like a million degrees, so the whole thing just looks like a nuclear bomb. And he <laughs> just, like, oh, he's pruning, baby. I'm just like, look at the spa up. It's like predators walk by five times already. I'm chilling. I'm surviving. Still here. So, so yeah, if you if you like if you found somewhere warm, your body temperature, I'd be fucked. That would be good, right? Because your body heat. Yeah. Your heat no, the whole thing is you've got to you've got to decrease the temperature of your body, Look, or go somewhere where the environment's warm and they can't. I think the I think right? the moral of the story is that if Predator was against the, the band, it wouldn't be who survives the longest; it'd just be who does Predator find first. Yeah, who <laughs> finds you first, and then it's just well, one Jake's after the other. Here, so we're gonna say Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's actually gotten held up by the Predator. Yeah. <laughs> does, Predator does Predator eat people? No, no. Just kills him. Oh, okay, I was going to say, he's he got the skull like, on so Jake's, Jake's yeah. got no meat on him. So, like, <laughs> they'd be like, if, he'd have he's not great, he's not spine. great target for Predator. Like, if he's <laughs> eating, <laughs> he's fine. Yeah. Well, okay. All right, then. I feel like, okay, so Predator's a bit, a bit hectic because he's got all the skills and that. What about Zombie Apocalypse, then? Oh, uh, I, I, I've read the, um, what is it, that Tom Brooks or whatever is... It's like how to survive a zombie apocalypse or whatever. It was the... Oh, no, it's Go World War Z. Bunnings. World War Z. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the book is based on. <laughs> yeah, because the, the guy who wrote World War Z wrote a book before a called How to Survive a Zombie yeah. Apocalypse. And it's, like, oh. actually, like, written from, like, a scientific standpoint. Like, here's how you and actually it, like, survive. Yeah, and it, like, starts off at the yeah, beginning, like, it, it kind of, like, yeah. sets up the world as to, like, how it's happened and this and that. And it's, like, mm, scientifically plausible. And then it tells you all the things, like, go to a second-story house, knock out the stairs. And there's also, like, going through the, like... Are they shambling slow zombies? Are they the fast zombies? Oh, are they the what? Is it what was it? World War Z? Yeah. Are they are they ants like in World War Z? Yeah. <laughs> Just oh, where they climb each other? Oh, yeah. 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 I, haven't, I haven't seen, seen that. Yeah. If it's that, then it's we're all done. But if they're shambling zombies, I reckon I could go a couple of years. 
couple you've, of years. That's a big call. So Rick's watched you, a lot of zombie to... content too. Like Rick's, what you've watched all of Walking Dead, right? Uh, not all of it. A lot, more than I have. <laughs> well, a lot more than I have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I mean, um, they finally ended it. And... So you trust your ability to to forage for food no, and, see, and that's, resources? That's where it'd go. Like once once all of the perishables were perished, I I would be soon behind. <laughs> 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 Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm like, oh, here's a berry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. so, to death. But look, I know, a few, I know a few strats. I know I know the choice weapons. Like, you know, golf club, nah. nah. Hey, cricket bat, pretty good. Um, cricket bat or baseball bat? Baseball bat, yeah. Baseball, baseball bat, but bat. I don't have one. Yeah, I Steel baseball, baseball bat. bat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they spike, would... spike bat. Yeah, actually, a, everyone's got one of them. A wooden baseball bat would be better than <laughs> I steel, mean, right? Because <laughs> the steel would like ding and bend. Like those yeah, things are also lightweight. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, it's a bit quicker, more. but not as much sound, force though. behind it. Yeah, really I love it. Sound. You want to crack skulls? You don't want to just whack them. I've always said that. <laughs> so I'll live my life. <laughs> what you want to crack skulls? skulls. <laughs> <laughs> you want to crack skulls, not just dent them. <laughs> That's all that gym training's for, for the zombie apocalypse. I'm ready. No, but yeah. Between you two, what do you guys reckon? Jamie's got the strength over me. But does he have the reach? I've I've definitely got, not. I've got, I've got the reach. <laughs> I've got the reach. I've like, I know, I mean, there's, it depends what we're talking yeah, about. Are we talking about zombie more... combat? I could, I, I'm, I'm, good at live, I'm good at living off, um, lo- I could live off long, uh, long life food for a long time. Okay. If, I, if I had a bunker, I'm sorted. I could survive. Do you have a bunker though? No. Does anyone in Australia have a bunker? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not, Australia's fucked in zombie apocalypses because we don't. So Dan's I mean, already dead. Most of us. So. Yeah. The lack of basements is really hurting us. No, but see, basement isn't necessarily that good. Yeah, because you're trapped. Yeah. 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 Basement yeah. the band, though. It's very good. See, like, I just, I just, just, I just destroy the stairs in the it's entry, talked about entryway. Music. <laughs> have a ladder, climb up the ladder, pull the ladder up. They're not getting up there. They're reaching up. And, uh, I just feel like oh, a, a no, was very up. tall. I will I say, I will say, actually, oh, these days... See, I'd have to destroy that as well. That'd all be part of the prep. I like you sneaking through this. These days, I like my odds against zombies <laughs> because... They'd knock down the balcony and, and, and everything so they can't get up, you know? I'd have, like, I know. Yeah, Rick's got a vantage point up there. Yeah. 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 If they're coming through the bushes of Kiroi, he's got them. Long I, range. I, like... <laughs> with what? Little rocks. I su- I su- a gun. <laughs> I, su- I, I got like a slingshot, but Simpson, like. Yeah. No, I did. Um, I did some. I did clay pigeon shooting at a friend's box party recently. Ooh, is that hard? <laughs> I thought it was. It was me and like nine Air Force guys, or like or like ten Air Force guys, and I thought I was gonna really embarrass myself. As it turns out, they only fire guns a couple of times a year in the Air Force. Okay. Yeah. Now, so if I they were in the air, different story. Yeah. yeah. But so um, yeah. I mean, they didn't let me fly a plane. I don't know why. But um, but no, it was like I was like, I've never touched a gun in my life. I'm gonna embarrass myself in front of these military guys. I ended up winning the days, the days takings. Hidden time. And I was like, so I think now, I mean, not 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 saying big gun guy me over here. Um, quite the opposite. But my accuracy was decent, and I think with a, if I had a shotgun, okay. these zombies. We might, um, I might stand a chance. Okay, I'll allow that. All I'm hearing after that is the breakdown paintball challenge. <laughs> paintball, I don't know. I yeah, love paintball. It's, it's been I, haven't been so I haven't been in so long. I haven't been in so long. See, like, I, I'd like to go paintball. See, we talked about this honest. in my box I really week. That was one of the things I was like, paintball maybe? People mention paintball yeah. and then they're like, oh, I don't know. What about laser tag? And it's like, but without the fear, there is yeah, no like, like oh, adrenaline. I don't want to get like, hurt. Yeah. Let's go laser tag. Yeah. Fuck off. Like, Pop you, it. You get, hit, you get hit by the first paintball and you like look down and it's not burst, but it's hurt so much oh. more because it's just slammed into you and you're like, ah, and you're like, oh, I'm still in, but ah. <laughs> like, it's once the fury comes out. Yeah. Oh, I remember I did paintball in school, and I was like, in school, yeah, it was like um, what year, school did you go? well, no, it was like a year ten or twelve, like camp or whatever, and like one of the days we did like a big paintball thing. But, Zombie um, apocalypse prep school. It was like all yeah. all of the girls ended up like sitting on a hill and like doing something after like one round. They're like, fuck that. So they were just off in the distance. And then your, I know like, your mates would have been psychotic with it. Yeah, well, no, there's just there's some people who were just friends. idiots as well. Like it, it was good because you could had like the strategies. Like you'd all just be sitting there hiding behind things, but then we're like, all right, boys, rush on three, and they're in the little fort and we're outside. It's like three, two, one, rush out, and like you know, yeah. some people get picked off, but other people get in there. And he's like, pew, pew, sick. But then it was like at the no, end of the days, yeah, yeah it's fun, man. But um, you kind of regret it when you're looking content. at your, your yeah, polka dot body afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But no, at the end, it was like, okay, whoever's got paintballs left, like, just kind of get in the middle, 
and then we blow a whistle, and then it's like everyone runs out from the center, and then once we blow the whistle again, you can shoot. But there was still like the rule of like, you know, don't shoot someone within like two, three meters of yeah, you, whatever it was. Yeah. And I just remember running, and there was a guy like from me and an eighth behind me, just running like this, and then I hear the second whistle, and it was like, whistle, boom, in the back of the head. And I was just like, the whole oh, time, you know, the, whole, yeah. the whole time he was running, it was like, was like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 this. That is literally the perfect example of what, like, what's that oh, saying? I forget that cone tape. <laughs> Everybody's got a plan until they get smacked in the head. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the perfect example. Nah, it's funny getting like smacked in the goggles though, because it's just like suddenly pain. You're like, well, at least I didn't hurt. That freaks yeah. me out. Anything <laughs> near my eyes freaks me out. Well, you're always yeah. wearing masks, so. Yeah, just yeah, the, yeah, the they, have some, they have some gaps though, don't they? Yeah, they got, like, a little, like, I got shot in like, the mouth. Like a paintball Holy hit, because it's like it. Dude, it that I was gonna yeah, say it wasn't, it wasn't fun because they have the like the grade into like so we like slammed in yeah and a yeah. bit hit and it exploded but half of the like the casing of it went through and uh-huh. hit me in the lip my lip just swelled up yeah. instantly and my mouth was full of pain my I was mouth like, is hurting this fucking sucks <laughs> <laughs> and I was just yeah, like you're, well you're I gotta keep to go again. gotta keep playing yeah. like because yeah. it's like I could either war, bro. crack the shits and walk out, but I'd get shot. So yeah. I'm like, fuck this. Same so thing. Just like, <laughs> you motherfuckers are going to die. You're just looking to pe- peg other people in the face, being like, yeah. I'll get you back. Yeah. Aiming straight for the dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you you, you always got to wear a cup. Always <laughs> wear a the cup. The guy who, yeah, always. the ones yeah. who aren't wearing cups. That's yeah, that's the last many people didn't have cups. I was like, that's... I thought you weren't allowed to. No, that's like no, optional, like it's, but like it's recommended, recommended to do it because if you, it's like wear your mask at all times. If the mask comes off, the game's off. Cup. Yeah. Your funeral. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your children. You want a shredded ball sack by all means. <laughs> exactly. We know the guys who don't get laid. Yeah. <laughs> I was done with this anyway. It's fine. I still have two I balls. It's just purple now. <laughs> you know, guys in their forties running out there. Free me. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. <laughs> That's just, I wonder why you're so keen to play. Why is that guy's nutsack hanging out of his pants? <laughs> you're sitting there like got cover like with your leg up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> instead of a, instead of a human shield, it's a scrotal shield. Yeah. You just <laughs> <laughs> the bat wings. Oh my god. Oh, oh, now there's something people are didn't need to hear. If, you, if they hit it right, it'll trampoline back at you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what you want right there. Now we know what Dan's working with. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Bouncy ball bag right there. <laughs> the elasticated oh. man. Jesus. Fuck it out. It's the conversations you really want to lead into a music chat with. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, wait, well, wait is, this, is this still recording? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every 10 minutes, we'll be like, are we recording this? <laughs> oh, we're we're going to get an hour in and we'll be like, oh, so you're yeah. going to edit all Yeah, that what do you guys out, feel right? like? Are you guys veg or vegan either? Nope, neither. Okay, well, you guys say a preference and we'll roll. What do you guys, I mean, we don't know where we are, so... You tell us what the round you said you don't know what we are. Honestly, where we are. Where we are. I know what we are. It's pretty well. If you go to like DoorDash or Uber Eats, it's pretty well a choice of anything. So, alright. Burgers, Thai, Chinese. I think there's like one or two Indian places. I don't know. Pizza. Any requests for you? No, honestly, I'm. Chicken in a while. A what? Solid butter chicken in a while. I don't know if there is a solid one around. I hate to say. It's all liquid around here, baby. Yeah. I'll get your your. What is it? Like the, the Vindaloo smoothie, thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how old is that butter chicken? Only a few weeks. Perfect. <laughs> no, I, I, my, 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 to perfection. My partner made me butter chicken a few like weeks or months ago it was now, but she got like a pack of one and made it. And I was like, I did not realize that butter chicken could be nice. Like in like mm-hmm. a... Really? You know, like, I, I don't mean like that because, you know, I've had it when I was a kid. That's the only thing you'd eat being a white child in an Indian place. <laughs> yeah. Zombie apocalypse has started, boys. Nearby. <laughs> Rick, didn't, Rick didn't discover spice until the age of about 25, I think. No, yeah, no, it would have been like 21, 22. <laughs> like spice. How, do we, now, go, how yeah. do we go with spice? Yeah. Uh, we, like, we like a bit of... Everyone in the band likes a bit of, a little bit of spice. I was a mild man for two decades, and yeah. now I, I'm a medium to hot. Extra hot oh. just punishes. I was a We introduced bitch. him to the Pad Key yeah. Mao. And then I went to the Pad Key Mao. Didn't eat noodle. anything yeah. spicy. That was something me and... That's a long, Came long back standing have a tolerance for spice. both Jake Oh, really? And Fully. The guy introduced Jake to it. It was probably just in everything Rick. even when you and didn't he, want Rick the spice. And he used to eat very much like a Pad I have like a little bitch stomach. Now he orders a Pad Key Mao. And so I was like, I white rice for three weeks. And I came back. And then all of a sudden had spicy food in containers. Okay. Don't know what happened. So what's your go-to then? You couldn't handle the spicy chip. Oh, fuck you for that. We did a... <laughs> we did. A, what was it, like a ghost chili? Uh, it, was, that, it was the, the world's the hottest corn chips. The, of corn chips. Oh, oh, the ones that come in a single pack. No, no, no. no, no like, like, I you, do want to get that one. You you mean, mean, not not the one, but... You mean like the... 
the what's it called air sealed, vacuum sealed. Like, yeah. yeah, this is designed to fuck it, you. It up. wasn't that. It was like it literally said the world's hottest corn chip. He's like, it'll be fine. It won't be that hot. And we both had it, and my tongue fucking melted. <laughs> it was de- melted. It was like it was before we shot a reaction to the used. One of their new songs. Pretty sure the song was called Fuck You, which is appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's just like, I actually don't think I can do this. And Listen, he got up and I went was downstairs. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then, like an idiot, I was like, I'll make myself a protein shake. That'll fix it. But oh, I have milk. No. I used water and I made it worse. <laughs> I, yeah, I have a distinct memory of us being down in um in Melbourne at um, the uh, the old Coburg house. Yeah. And oh, we were, um, or was it, no, the Pasco Vale house. I didn't something. partake in that, but I know what yeah, you're Yeah, we were, about. we were at, um, staying with. Um, the the pride lands and drag guys we used to always hang out at their house down there they had just a big share house full of yeah i've been to the drag house you have yeah wait you know what wait in pasco or or Uh, Coburg? mm, they don't have a new one now so yeah yeah. this was only a year ago oh okay yeah wow yeah Yeah, melbourne guys but i I have a feeling it's no different (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's honestly something we don't have like back down there there was like there's like a good handful of bands where there's like a few little share houses which had like two or three bands in them and it's like it was so much fun to just be able to go like stay with mates yeah. down there and it's like I don't know that many people up in Sydney who have share houses full of just derelict musicians like that it's beautiful <laughs> but Sydney's we, um, classy like that <laughs> yeah no, we, were, we, were, we were hanging out and um, and it was it was our friend uh, Charlie Cheeseman shout out Charlie Cheeseman um, the best he it was like do you guys you guys like chilli and we were like yeah and he pulls out these these chilli paste and going you know going up the up the scale up the yeah. Richter scale mm-hmm. or what is it the Scov- Scoville scale Scoville, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah going up the Scoville scale and we're doing them one by one until we get to, yeah, like the, the Reaper paste. And it's like, and these are like, they're not diluted at all. It's pure ground, the ground chili with a bit of vinegar. That's all it is. So, oh, wow. and yeah, we were eating like a little, a little end of a corn chip in it. I remember, I think we, I think Jake and I like just demolished a whole, their entire um, share house's supply of almond milk. <laughs> I just remember that you were all doing it like this is so fun come over and hang and I was like that was still early in my spice career so I was like no no I'm my chill. spice career <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an illustrious I was still an apprentice at that stage but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just remember them all being like this is so cool yeah 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 and then they're done and then everyone's just got a carton of oat milk or almond milk in their hands just like to be like passing it around yeah. like, it was one of those things as well where like, it was a largely I think it was a largely vegan house and we are like do you guys have milk and they're like um, only almond milk we were like yeah that'll do like <laughs> Full disclosure, when I went to the one of those lolly stores the other day, I saw that, you know, uh, Jelly Bellies have the bean boozled with all the gross tasting ones. Yeah. They have like a super hot one as well that goes all the way up to like a Carolina oh, Reaper no. one. I almost <laughs> bought them to bring because I thought super that might be... Super hot gelatin sounds like the most dangerous thing ever. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've had, I, I have time. had something like that. I went There was like a, I think we were in the States or something and I found like this, a chili store, you know, that just specialized in that. And There's one in New Orleans. I went in yeah. the one in New Orleans and it... I was terrified. Like, they would be, they would be crazy. About well, dude, it, like so. in America, flame and hot is a flavor. Yeah, like yeah. it's like it's not a description; it's a flavor. And like, they got flame and hot um, Mountain Dew. Yeah, I know. Which yeah. is like yeah. that's just cursed. Like I don't. Yeah. Oh, people chili and drinks. Cr- is... Crush up flame yeah. and hots and then crumb chicken in them. That's oh, actually that's, something that's I want. Yeah. 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 That actually sounds that's pretty, pretty good. Like Cheetos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like flame and hot Cheetos. Use them yeah. as a breading for like fried chicken. Sounds dope, honestly. But yeah, I've seen people do that with like Doritos chips as well. I want, I want to try that one time. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Now I want chicken. Yeah. Look, well, what do we, we do? Get chi- we can get fried chicken. I'll just stop recording what we just saw. Hey, can we get one, Nathan? Boy, boy. <laughs> Gas on. Did I stop Nathan? Nathan, hey, I didn't know how to turn on the camera. There you go, Johnny. What did you want to ask now I've turned the cameras on uh, for you? Okay, so the cameras can't see it, but we have these... these they have, like, cool... I believe they're called koozies. Koozies? To the, to the international koozies? crowd. Koozies? I don't know. Yeah. We will call them stubby holders. Stubby holders. Stubby holders. Stubby holders. Yeah, drink coolers. Give us your ideas. They want beer themed Can you read names. Out the first two so they know what okay, so this one says <laughs> Polaris and Sons, the draft of me. And what did you say the other one was? And we previously had the Mortal Ale. The Mortal Ale. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so what we, we need there is fatalism, fatalism something or yeah, yeah something F based potentially. Uh, please drop in the comments. <laughs> I mean, it could be Fatal Lager. Fatal Lager. Ooh. Fatal Lager. I think, not, I think we've done Don't it. worry, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the camera. <laughs> Turn off the camera. <laughs> Delete that bit. <laughs> Fuck you guys. That one just sounds objectively like it's going to kill you. Though. Like, yeah. if you drink this, you simply die. That's... Hey, how do you guys feel about liquid death? Um, oh, it's pretentious ass. 
But it's fine. It's water. I'm trying to get an endorsement with them. Rick, shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) No, like, I I honestly, I have nothing against it. It's just funny seeing people, like, rep it like it's some, like, crazy thing. It's so weird to drink water from a can. No, damn good. Their their, their, their branding is incredible. So, like, the way that they've made... What about, like, water? It's like the sparkling ones. The way they've made canned water cool. I've only ever had the normal from liquid um, If they made shirts, I'd wear one. Like, they've got cool design. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I like water. Craig from... Stray was saying that he was like reaching out to them for like the downbeat, and they're like, "Oh, thanks, man, but we don't really need it." Wow, we've got like we've got that market. They've yeah. got, well, they've gone, they've they've been doing it for long enough now that I feel like, yeah, they've well, that is their exact. They finally market. reached that point where they don't mm. need to give away slaps all the yeah. time. Like, but yeah, yeah, they've done that. It is incredible, though. I mean, I for a long time we I had them at everybody. download. Hey, they had them at download. Yeah, all, that's uh, right. All yeah. the waters mm. were were liquid death like cans or bring your own water bottle. Because there was no like plastic. Yeah. That's, that's a really yeah. weird thing you experience when you start playing festivals too. Like you realize that all these companies like have an effect on like what you're drinking and stuff like stage, which sounds obvious to some people. But for us, yeah. then you're like, you know, if someone was telling me a story about a festival they were at and they were they wanted to get some Coke, not some Coca Cola. Sorry, just <laughs> <to> specify. <laughs> wow. Some wow. Yeah. Yes. No, this is a Coca Cola story, not the other kind. But they, yeah. You know how they... you were worried about things you might say. <laughs> <laughs> this is that point. Yeah, that point where you have to turn the filter on. Yeah, Technical no. Technical difficulties. <laughs> they were trying to get some Coca-Cola and they were told, Cocaine. sorry, it's... A, it's a, <laughs> Finish your fucking story. Go on, listen. I'm trying. <laughs> got told it's a Pepsi-sponsored festival so you can't have Coca-Cola. Oh, and they ended up... Oh. And, they, so they, and then they ended up finding out later that the, the headliners of the festival had a, had a shit ton of it and was like, oh yeah, we got it on our rider so they just gave them a <laughs> Coca-Cola. But it's like... That's like yeah, there are little. There's politics the thing, in what yeah. drinks you can get backstage. So that it's like, really and there was that time. If you were Mike Mill from Suicidal Tendencies, if you were what, sorry, if you were Mike from Suicidal Tendencies, I remember you had that song like. Uh, oh, all he wanted was a Pepsi. Yeah, all yeah, of course, Pepsi. Oh, exactly. yeah. Of course. Yeah. You Imagine if you were a No, that you wouldn't give it to I respected that a lot. Just a Pepsi. I respected that. Please don't leave me. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> this is on Sorry, camera, Nathan Johnny. Left you hanging on camera. Well, I was getting the evil eye from Nathan. No, like. I was. I was like, what an obscure. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually. You. It's honestly not that obscure. It's no, just none of us. Uh, yeah. You know, real metalheads. Also, I didn't really. But we we actually do reference that a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just because. I'm going to try and see them at the end of the year, Embarrassing actually. trivia um, about that song. Good drummer playing at the moment. I didn't yeah, know it was them, because I only heard Senses Fail cover it. That's the first time I heard that song. No way. And I thought that was a Senses Fail song. I tell you that's the truth of me, too. <laughs> and then I was like, I knew I knew a couple of Suicidal Tendencies songs. I knew Psycho Vision okay. from um, Tony Hawk's. Tony Hawk's, yeah. Yeah, which is insane yeah. track. Oh. Like... Yeah. Will the soundtrack ever get better than the Tony Hawk soundtracks? I don't Probably know not. how it could be beaten. Uh, no. Except I think it, what was the, I think it was like... MTX Unleashed was pretty sick. One of the I mean, Scream games, movies, yeah. I think, um, Deep Speed. Uh, I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. the guys from... the Scream movies. Yeah, the guys from Creed actually had a hand in putting it together, so there were two Creed songs on it. Yeah, <laughs> First and last. But you know it's a good soundtrack. Right, yeah. that's, that's the thing yeah. I miss these days, is like we had this era, right, where like sound movie soundtracks, they were like literally pulling like, who's the biggest alternative rock band right yeah, now? Yeah, it's like, like Trent Reznor's done get... so many movies, yeah. Oh, no, but I'm talking about, I'm talking about like, you know, about, yeah. Trent Reznor's soundtracking something, yeah, but I'm yeah. talking about like, American let's get Pie? Nickelback to write two songs for this movie. Like, yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that, like there was this really funny, and th- we were just talking about Evanescence before, right? One of the, one of those huge Evanescence tracks was, Daredevil. yes, yeah, Two of them. <laughs> you're so good. <laughs> I know my nerdy movies. And yeah, the references. Were you no, I, to I them remember. About this? There's no, this... we did. We didn't talk music with them at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> did you talk about Daredevil? <laughs> no, we we talked about Five Minutes of Shit. Asked him trivia, and then asked Amy Lee if she'd rather wear cold socks or cold underwear. You asked us that one too. Yeah. We asked every band. That's our yeah. one question we must ask every band. You asked Amy Lee if she would wear well, cold socks. Well, we asked socks the whole band. Underwear. What did she pick? Uh, she picked socks, so socks. fuck that woman. Oh, I feel like Amy underwear makes more sense. Good for your sperm. I don't think she's worried about that. <laughs> no, she's not. I'm not. I'm saying for you, brother. She's, she's worried about your sperm. <laughs> That's why she wore socks. <laughs> Classic Amy Lee, really, isn't it? And also, when my feet are cold, my nose just runs like a waterfall. It's, oh. It pisses me off. Fun. That's a fun fact. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I need to keep my extremities warm. <laughs> it's got a little sock for it. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys ever going to dabble in the world of you know how all, we were talking about beer and cool beer designs? Are you guys ever going to dabble in that world of like a Polaris we, beer or we we did, we, we, we toyed with it for work. a beer. Yeah, yeah. We, we we had um there was a company up in Brisbane who was looking at us and um like we were talking back and forth, but then it just ended up getting to the point where I was like we didn't have the time to go up there and like sort it out properly, and we didn't want it to be like something where they just make something and yeah. we just endorse we it. Didn't so, yeah. Yeah. We didn't want to half We want to we want to make sure that we're kind of in 
in involved from like the ground up, but it's something that would definitely be interesting. I still like the idea. Yeah, one with like multiple beer, people in a beer, band. a wine, a whiskey, well, like any, thing, like any with, of them. Like, especially yeah. with beer, like beers, like one of those things. Number one, it's an acquired taste, mm. and everyone has their own specific style of I feel beer. Like it's hard, yeah. Would it be a pale ale? Would it be a bitter? Oh, would it would it be not a be a pale ale. Pale ale is like the worst beer ever. Yeah, We're not like yeah. I, one I thing we do agree well on. I am frustrated to go to so many breweries. Like I literally went to a brewery in Everly the other day, and it's like. Pale ale, pale ale, IPA, whatever, whatever, XPA, mm. lager. And in the lager description, it says Australian pale ale. I'm like, <laughs> you liars! Like, what is that? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a lagers, like, I like crispy beers. I'm a, I'm a lagers guy. Like, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll don't well, drink Pale ales are crispy, but they're just like... Oh, they just have. I was, just really... I was pale ale for a while because it does. It doesn't. It's not as certain heavy. ones. Certain ones. Can I've really had good ones. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Lagers are. No, that's that's Jamie? like that's like my my mean? thing. Lager. When, Lager? Yeah, lager. You know when people say like what's, what's lager, something baby. that what's something you think everyone's only pretending to like and doesn't really like? Pale ale is my answer always. Though. No, I, XPA I, is the okay. true. Yeah, my theory, my theory is that I don't actually have you seen this, have you seen the take. meme? It's like a guy where it's like it's like how to save money at a pub and he's like, Can I please get your uh, like you know, your strongest XPA? And he gets it, he goes yeah, it's going to take me ages to finish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like spot on. It's a good way. Yeah, so, no, I can't, I can't drink them fast. Uh two weekends ago. Uh, as you guys know, I've got kids, so I've done this with both my kids now, like, tried to get them to taste beer, because I'm oh, like, yeah. they taste it, they won't ever fucking want it, yeah. because it's fucking gross. Yeah. So, my son, I hate that, that's gross. My daughter's like, can I have a sip? I'm like, yeah, you can, baby girl. Has a sip. Has another sip. Oh, it's no. It's actually pretty good. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> it reminds me of that story of like some kid, you know, his kid's, kid's dad finds him smoking ciggies and he's like, all right, you have to finish the whole pack now. And the idea is by the end, they'll be like, oh, I yeah. never want to taste a ciggy again. Kid gets to the end, he's kid's like, I don't like, want to taste a ciggy again. And the next day he goes by his pack. Yeah, yeah. The, kid's, the kid's just like, <laughs> couldn't thank you enough, dad. <laughs> just like, hey, dad, I feel like shit, but I look so fucking cool. <laughs> it's like, look at my teeth, dad. <laughs> <laughs> brown. Like, do, you guys, do you guys remember the cover for... Van Halen, what was the album? The one with Jump on it? And it had the, like, the cover is a, a, like a child, like a baby oh, with a cigarette. Yes. You couldn't fucking do that shit now. No, no. But they were doing, people were doing way worse back then. Like, the, <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, like there's, there's some, there are some bands putting out, like, with the, putting out album art that was, like, well, it's sealing like the Nirvana mess, kid. He's come up in news a few times. Yeah, he's but see, but that one was, that one was different. Yeah. There was, like, there was, like, some, some, like, hair metal bands and stuff from back, I'm trying to remember who it was. There was some particular band, I think they were, like, a European glam metal band that had an album cover that ended up having to get completely censored because it was just yeah. like I mean it happened yeah. to Thy Art they got censored with an album artwork yeah um Holy War had oh, oh that was yeah that was yeah. that's the child yeah. with the explosive vest yeah the vest yeah, yeah. yeah. So they had the alternate had cover the, it was like just the kind of ambiguous head kind of thing I mean the like, Nirvana thing you kind of can see where they're coming from though because that that child has the biggest selling dick of all time <laughs> <laughs> Give yeah. me a cut of that. But he's like, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't give permission for that. You were a fucking baby. Yeah. And you yeah. still are. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's just like, I swear to God, it's bigger now. I mean, the, be the best part about it he is gets that people... He little moment in the news every couple of years. And yeah. Let him have it. My, my favourite thing is that he, he's saying things like, yeah, you know, like this has affected my whole life. I can't escape it. Everyone knows me as the Nirvana baby. And it's like, because you keep telling people. Yeah. Like, no, you were a fucking baby. No one can recognise... No one looked at that and goes... Yo, that's Kyle. Like, no, it's like no one's he doing... he does have the he... same dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you can't escape that. <laughs> well, give I that man whatever he needs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, there was, yeah, that fact... That... <laughs> You get away with a lot of stuff in those days that should never have been done. Yeah, so even of... like early Blink stuff. Things they joked about on stage, things that are saying. Oh, yeah. oh my god! No, I you think about that sometimes. Like, I mean, yeah. it's like you watch like Eddie Murphy's old stand-up. Yeah. Oh, dude, like, dude. that's like the highest selling like yeah. stand-up of all time. That's, that's and he is now probably like a family white. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like you can make the transition if you're in the right time. Like period, that's, that was the can... voice of Donkey. That's mm -hmm. the guy from Daddy Daycare. Like, mm. but also the like, stuff you're saying. Like some of it, like some of some of it is still funny, but it's red hot. And there's some of it. I'm like, that's just actually really fucked up you just shouldn't have made that joke but, but like it, it's like weird if you in watch it back yeah. you can see how different the time was yeah, yeah. and that's oh, when yeah. like people sort of think like people are so bad with the things they do and say now it's like i i think you forget how far we've come yeah. as Johnny, people i want to say something here and it's not saying that you're old but you were around for that <laughs> do you i'm not actually trying to insult him here do you remember that because like what? i was 
You guys were all left, like I was. I was. Yeah. That was, I was Eddie Murphy Raw was eighties, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, was, I, was, I, was I wasn't allowed to watch that until I was older. Okay, because yeah. I remember that from when I was in high school, my friends watched yeah. that. I watched it when I was older, and you yeah. it was so edgy, right? So edgy. Yeah. One of my yeah. mates had like the Eddie Murphy Raw DVD or probably VHS back then. Yeah. I watched it when I was you know early teens. Okay, because I was thinking like when I was in teens, you must yeah. have been early twenties maybe. Or have uh, you seen it no, I watched that? it when I was teens as yeah, well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nah, my, my parents wouldn't let me watch that shit. And you can understand why. Oh, yeah. I do now, like this. I could, like, <laughs> like, honestly, like, these days, like, I tried to rewatch some of it, and there were some parts that, like, it, it felt really weird. I was like, I felt conflicted yeah. watching it. Like, yeah. just the difference between, you know, when you're 14, and the more taboo something is, the cooler it is, like, the more edgy it is, and you're like, oh, that was an awful thing to say. That's hilarious. I and so like now, nowadays, I watch it, and it's like, I like to hope this is just a sign of growth. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, well, I'm like a- I literally, like, I couldn't, I couldn't feel the same way about it anymore. Like, there's, but there's still parts of it that are very funny. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Absolutely. It's just strange when the Great context comedian. changes and you change. I feel a lot about Chappelle a bit. I feel, oh, I feel like about Chappelle all the time. Yeah, and people I feel like, like a lot. So good. What Chappelle? Like, well, there's does, a lot. A lot that he says though, though like, and he's he's I mean, doing it to be provocative to an extent. I know. Yeah. I don't like that. <clears throat> yeah, I don't so like being so like people nail in on that niche and just go how far can I push it yeah, and then they just keep exactly. pushing it when they get talk about get it. away with it like, but everyone else isn't doing it for a reason like you don't need to be yeah, yeah. You get, that guy. there's intelligent humour and then there's like shock humour there's punching yeah. down punching down is just kind of sad would you guys yeah, like another beer like, I'd love another beer it's like I don't want to Do sit here and talk coke? about what no, one of the greatest comedians of all time actually, should you. or shouldn't yeah. have done in his comedy no, like no, that's no. not my place yeah, and but, I guess, but I guess there's some bring things these where in? in my opinion no, I just go like no, you didn't need to go down that path with the jokes in order to be funny you've got a lot of material like, <laughs> also I think error appropriate mine's more of the recent stuff where I've still been like there's like jokes in there that are like quite racist yeah I'm like it's you know better, you know better than that now throughout your history great you said that in the 90s and it's like you can get away with it because it was kind of like other people did it but now you're doing it to be the guy that's doing it he's doing you're doing things because someone told you not to and there's a, I, there's a little part of that that I sometimes I'm just like I don't really like that as a motivation yeah mm. but like but again it's like it's it's that's his that's what he wants to put out there that's yeah. fine like it's people don't have to consume it there's just there's a part of me that sometimes you know sometimes you are a little you feel a little disappointed when people whose art you've generally liked take it in a certain direction or, du- or double down on certain things and then kind of tarnishes you feel tarnishes upset it for you or something yeah, yeah, yeah fully yeah, but you I think like that, the way you view them yeah, yeah that, you're like that, oh, I like it but now he's now they've done this so it's like ah. Oh. I don't yeah. think he should necessarily be refused a platform for it no though. and it's that's just also like, why I don't think you should like yeah. you know we should I think be we should scrapping. be critical I think we should be critical yeah like, we shouldn't be scrapping like Eddie Murphy Raw and Delirious from you know history books and stopping people watching it because I think it's good that people watch it and feel that way and go oh I wouldn't do that now I don't believe in pretending like stuff never happened yeah you know sure. like yeah. when it comes to it's, it's the same as like you can delete it you can't learn from it because they because they represent some very bad historical times you know what I mean like question on that though serious question on that mm. do you guys because I know like I don't really use Facebook at all anymore I occasionally look at it to see whose birthdays it is and read some sport or music shit yeah do you ever get those sort of statuses that come up as a memory and you're like and it's not necessarily anything terribly bad but you kind of look at it and go oh that was kind of in poor taste or what was I thinking posting that not that it might be bad but it's like why did I think that people needed to know that yeah like, that? Oh, how did it, I think that, that was a cool thing to say or to post or something yeah yeah, yeah I know what you mean and yeah. like, also growing up I think I'll get rid of that one media first starting yeah like that's just part of it we all were learning yeah how to post on yeah, yeah we were all what learning as we were going what because sharing, it was new to us sharing. and we were yeah. using it as fresh you there's, know? Nothing, yeah. there's nothing worse than like seeing what you thought would like you know when you would just reply to someone's comment with like just some shitty attempt some at nonsense. being funny yeah. and it was complete nonsense it was like haha I'm 16 I'm so random and you just say the most <laughs> random thing that you could think that of that was and actually I, one of your comments JK LOL <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like John did that, but it's, I'm 36, I'm so random. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Still does it last week, yeah. That's, that is the worst part. Like, Facebook memories just has this ability to, like, make you want to shrivel back inside your oh, own yeah. body. Like, you know, it's really bad. Like, I don't know if you did, I, did I actually comment that? Do you ever see the comments and thing. you've commented back and they've deleted Facebook stage, so it's just you commenting back to no one? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh it's, it's just, just, it's just, it's just me. No. 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 <laughs> what were we thinking that day? I'm doing it again. <laughs> Most of my memories are just like, I can't believe phones looked like that bad with cameras. Yeah. Like seeing the photos that I used to post, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. That's some great. Also, you mentioned the thing back then about oversharing. Yeah. Isn't it funny how like when you've had social media for a while and you get a little bit older, much older, right? Uh, <laughs> you 
you you look back and you're like, oh god, that was massive oversharing. But then you look at like what some people are posting on oh. stories and TikTok now, and it's like it's still just all oversharing. No, yeah. we, we, we have not learned to stop that. Yeah, <laughs> no one. It's getting it's getting worse. Like you see the like the oh, like mental health TikTok can be really in, really really intense sometimes. Yeah, and you just like the stuff that people are putting out there is like it's like at the end of the day if you want to tell your story tell your story but like some some people are putting stuff out there so casually that it almost feels like it's very it's very uncomfortable i mean it gets dangerous for the people who like need the help and feel like that's the outlet and that's the solution where it's like no like explore other solutions and speak to professionals and yeah speak to your friends don't look at a tiktok and feel like oh i know the solution to my problems now it's like no 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 no. everyone's different it's always it's always interesting as well like you know like anyone who's gone through like really traumatic experiences like you know, using humor to make light of the dark stuff is like mm. a coping, a very common coping mechanism. But sometimes doing that publicly for strangers, it's like, yeah. it's one thing to do that in front of your friends, to joke about your trauma among friends, but doing it like publicly with a huge, like worldwide anonymous audience can be really strange sometimes. And, and then sometimes, to get notoriety for that and to grow yeah. because of that. And I wonder, like I do oh, wonder sometimes about the point. influence that it's yeah. having on like young people. Whereas like, I think some people like, I don't want to generalize this, but I do worry that some young people see these things as like, oh, that's just like, that's what makes that person interesting. I was they, thinking, like, like mm-hmm. anxiety is a big one for that. People yeah. were talking about anxiety being like, like, I'm so anxious about this. And that's become a thing. Yeah. People have been like, oh yeah, I feel like I relate to that. And people so do start self-diagnosing and, yeah. not just self-diagnosing and then kind of being like it's okay because we're all like that rather mm. than being like okay this is the thing I could work on or yeah. maybe see something yeah. serious and it's like well everyone's I see all the people that talk about how anxious they are and how much stress they've got so I just feel the same way and it's okay Norm- yeah. normalising yeah. being anxious as yeah. like that's what everyone it's like no we should we should all work on it but the, yeah, yeah I mean, also the, I think the, the term anxiety <coughs> just in general is thrown around too much it's like Maybe. oh that gives me so much anxiety it's like does it or are you just a little bit worried about what you have to do next yeah like, yeah. does I, it actually give you anxiety like, well, well, yeah. have you seen anxiety yeah. in someone yeah like some people well, there's, I mean there's, there's feeling yeah, the exactly. feeling of anxiety and then there's having an anxiety disorder like those are different things like you yeah. can say it gives me anxious feelings or it gives me anxiety but that doesn't mean I have an anxiety disorder you yeah. know what I mean but mm. like yeah that's I mean, it's tricky though as well because like the thing with mental health is that like self-diagnosis is to a certain extent valid like with mental health it's one of the most important things in mental well, health well no one else it's can like, tell you how you feel it's like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You know, you're not necessarily getting a concrete diagnosis but it's like one of the first like you said it's, you, only you can say how you feel mm. so it's like one of without any level of self-diagnosis like mental health is in a pretty difficult spot like, mm. so but there's a, there's a degree to which it goes too far yeah do you guys I'm actually going to turn this into music now because we should do Ooh. that at some point. Yeah, we, got, we, got really, we got really serious for a while there. We have a new album coming out. Hope you like it. Done. Yeah. <laughs> it's got riffs, got drums, got vocals. Let's go. The food arrives, you guys are driving off. <laughs> we got what we needed. We know who's lasting against Predator. The... <laughs> None of us. Yeah. Yeah. Us, we're surviving. Yeah, you're getting out of here. With like being a band and like the like the, the lyrical content for you guys has always like touched on a lot of those feelings is that something that do you guys get any like pressure from uh, like feel like you're oversharing in that stuck like, point of being like okay cool like we're writing this thing that's a really vulnerable thing and it might not be written from like direct personal experience but some of the songs deal with some heavy subjects is that something that you ever like be like is that going to make do people see me like that, that I went through that, or is it someone going to have like, that pressure of like trying to relate to that? I mean, yeah, for sure. Like, it's definitely like I've, I've written lyrics where I've gone, I'm not sure if I'm ready for people to hear that. You know what I mean? Like, when, I think when, when I wrote Massacus, that was one of those ones. I was like, oh, this chorus is like, I think it's just because there's, like, I was going to say it's not metaphorical. There's a bunch of metaphors in the chorus. I can't, I can't avoid metaphors. That's just how I write. But, like, it's very, it really, it very directly states what it's trying to say. Yeah. Um, and I think well, at that point, that was probably the most direct chorus I've written. And I do remember being like, oh, do I want to be this literal? Um, like, do I want to put that really out there? And then it was, it was just one of those things where I kind of just looked and I was like, well, like, yeah, there's a vulnerability to it and you're opening yourself up a little bit. But I was like, well, the song's been in my head for three weeks. Yeah. And I haven't even written it down anywhere and it's still in my head. So it's probably worth saying. And like sometimes that's just what it comes to as well. And it's like, it's also just like, is it is it honest? Is it is it real? Is it true? Like mm. I think we've tried to be 
well, just that's the open thing. with our music. Like yeah. you've got to, if if I was if I felt like I was saying something untrue or something completely Disingenuous. fabricated. Yeah, yeah fabricated or, yeah. or putting you know if if we were if we were putting this vulnerability out there just with the goal of of I don't know just of, of just appealing having an impact that, for the appealing sake to of that it. side yeah yeah of yeah. Appe- appealing to people who are struggling just for the sake of appealing to them yeah um, which is something I wouldn't really want to do because no. it seems exploitative like and in the same breath like answering what you said with like trying to appeal to that or putting pressure on people to like kind of sympathize it's like people can draw so much from the lyrics like in different like like it could be a, a lifelong issue that the song is about but someone could attribute that to something that they felt a in few days moment, prior yeah. with an experience yeah. with one person like they just connect with it and they link it to to it yeah yeah. It's, yeah I guess it's less the pressure to make sure that you're kind of hitting that button for everyone and more just making sure that you're being as yeah. dancers like, in, like well the positive is real with at least like for any lyrics that you guys write <laughs> you guys don't actually do any of the vocals <laughs> so you can you can put all the fucked up shit and they'll just think it's Jamie <laughs> how do you go <laughs> actually, actually though like translating that emotion like is that something like this is a really direct thing for me do you feel pressure on that to like in the delivery of that to be the, like the mouthpiece for it? A little bit, yeah. Like, because I mean, I always want to convey the best that I can, the, like what Daniel is trying to get across. Yeah. And I guess yeah, there's a bit of pressure that comes with it, but at the same time, like I try to just relate it to something that has happened with me, so that I can actually put genuine emotion into it instead yeah. of just like, okay, this song's about this, and then you just pull it out of your ass, you know? Like yeah. it, it, it's. There's always another take. I think. I think yeah. <laughs> what, what works is that, like, I'm never. I don't really tend to write stor- songs about really specific moments in my life that no one else is. On June 23rd. Yeah. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And, and, it's, and, not, and, it's not a story about this one day that I had yeah. where all of these things happened that are really specific to me. Like, it's usually it's about a feeling. Yeah. You know, and it's like you usually present it to us in a way of yeah. like, what do you guys think about this? And if we can relate on it, then it'll elaborate. Okay. Further. Yeah. yeah, and I think like you're saying, like I think what Jamie's saying there about relating it to, like sometimes I will talk about something, he'll be like, it, Jamie will kind of be looking at like, oh, that actually reminds me of how I felt in this moment with this person in my life, and the yeah. scenario might be a little different, but the feeling's the same. Yeah, yeah. and so it's like that's all you really need. Um, and like Jamie's such an emotive performer anyway that it just comes through no matter what and then you know and if it's not coming through we'll chat about it we'll be like yeah. what are you thinking about when you say these words like mm. what are you picturing like and then we'll talk about what might make it more effective and yeah. stuff and then like I think it's sometimes it's almost like you know when you watch like behind the scenes videos from movies and they're like telling them someone has to cry in a movie for this reason but they're telling them think about when you lost your grandfather yeah. and it's totally different you know yeah. I think sometimes like that's that's kind of the way it works. But I think in, in the case of what we're writing about, you know, Jamie's usually able to find something pretty close to the scenario to relate on. Um, and it's even like with the new record, like there were certain points where it was like, like we read or heard the lyrics and it was like, oh, okay, like that's maybe a bit too on the nose and not, not, not broad enough to kind of like yeah. let people take it in. And then other points it's like, okay, that's too vague. Like let's, let's yeah. try to focus in on like an emotion and kind of like push it somewhere. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's always the kind of the line that you got to straddle. You don't want to, you don't want to, as you say, make it so tight that it's like alienating to people who maybe haven't felt that, but you don't want to make it so broad that it's just like sadness. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want that to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like everyone so, feels it. <laughs> like, so, he starts singing like, no, 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 Jamie, be more sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, man. <laughs> You're not crying yet, man. Yeah. I can't stop crying. Do you crying. think it helps the fact that you guys have been so close for so long where if Definitely. you've got an idea for something, you can sort of already preemptively see... I think Jamie will be able to connect to this or, you know, I think yeah. Jake will be able to nail the, the cleans for this part or whatever. And the, you, the same same way, you trust that he's going to present something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, Dan, Dan usually writes with an intent of, like, I hear this being in Jake's voice or I hear this being in Jamie's voice or, you know, it does singing change, and yeah, screaming as well. Like, yeah, but what happens now? Yeah, like, it, Mr. It's, Singy Boy over here. Well, yeah, yeah, now now, now say, there's not yeah. that easy division. Now it's not like... You're Jamie like, screams fuck. these parts. Jake sings these parts. It's now it's like <laughs> on this album, there's a lot we of flip do, flopping. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know some, what? Some That's... parts where even pre pro as one person, then recording in the studio. As yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. There, there was some we even there was that. some even where like one of the boys wasn't available on a day, so I'd be like, "Oh, Jake's not here. Jamie, can you just demo Jake's part so we can hear it?" And then we'd do the vice versa with Jake, and then we'd almost forget for a couple of months who was supposed to sing the parts, and then someone would bring it up. You know that's meant to be my part, right? Oh, fuck, dude, I've completely like yeah. my mind has just absorbed the yeah. old one, but like. That's cool though. It's like sick that you've worked on that. Both yeah, of you. Both, yeah. Th- this, not taken away from you guys, but I think vocally is probably the biggest standout difference for Polaris on this album. I think. That's cool. Yeah, I is, think honestly, <laughs> like, again, not taken away from the music, but I, I think this is 
genuinely your best album. Thank you. By, thank, by thank, far. You. thank you very much. By far. And I think it's because you guys have, like, You know we've clearly... listened to the album, right? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. yeah Who sent it to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better not, not be Not me Jeanine. sending him a photo of it playing, going, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you really did, too. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I genuinely think that this is your best album. It, it's a growth musically. There's so much different stuff on there, but dynamically, with the chopping and changing of the vocals between you two is just it's so fucking sick it's, it's funny got, it's got I my think favourite Polaris vocals, song on wait, it as well it's the vocals and the synth what's that it's Rick. got your favourite song on there my favourite Polaris song what? what's that which one? last one really all in vain, all in vain. yeah, yeah. Oh, my favourite yeah. Polaris song it's just fucking sick <laughs> he, likes, he likes a little likes a little 15-4 groove yeah. man dude I was like <laughs> I'm getting some like a little yeah. bit of yeah, a little bit of like prog vibes from this but we then the yeah. riff and the chorus it's just like oh this is Polaris but it's like yeah. Polaris this doing is, Polaris thing. It's so funny. New. Like That's, during the writing stage, I'll have like so many things just like written out instrumentally or whatever. And the guys will be like, not sure if that works, not sure if this works, not sure if this works with that, not sure if whatever. And every single time I say every single album, I go, once you have Jamie and Jake on there, you won't be saying that anymore. And yeah. sure enough, as soon as we start recording a few lines of vocals, it's like Oh, this is us. And it's like, <laughs> no shit. It, seal, it, seal, it does seal it. Like, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, because we... You I still guess, need to be mindful of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it does, yeah, vocals do bring it together. You know, like, when I think back, like, there are songs, like, something like The Remedy, for example, stood out like a sore thumb musically from the rest of the music. It was like, this is so rock yeah, compared right. to everything else on the record. But then you put the vocals in And it. then you put the vocals on it. It's like, I literally now couldn't... hard rock. I couldn't hear that song <laughs> as being a Polaris song for long as it's the biggest song wow. I've ever written. You yeah. know, like, but it just didn't sound like what our band sounds like in my mind and it wasn't until we got we got like we threw down like two takes we got that first line and mm. when we got that we were like okay something's good here we're doing something and then, and we, then did, we did didn't we like spit all the, the first bit. verse yeah we just like one take to, to see if it felt right or something and there's that sigh of relief where you go okay okay it sounds like us yeah, yeah. this yeah. is gonna be that's on cross 40 mil the other day wow it's on spotify that's insane oh, <laughs> what, that's what, what were you saying before about like the the thing with like the fans like listen, listeners like <coughs> emotions and stuff and how they tie to the music as well like in terms like that pressure that is that is kind of something i've had to deal with though like where it's it's something you kind of try to separate yourself from mentally but it's really hard to avoid like when when you've had a few songs which people have attached themselves to really closely emotionally yeah and people are telling you this song is really important in my life or this song helped me through a difficult stage in my life um like that stuff is really beautiful and amazing to hear mm. but it also creates this pressure you're like i have to keep doing that yeah like, i have to keep i like you and the funny thing is no one's saying like you better keep writing songs that like make me feel that way yeah. but like you know that that's what they're what's that's what they're what hoping they for and yeah. there's this when they someone the when someone they can, when that someone, they can attach to to a certain memory or to help them through something that they're yeah, dealing with when or... something has apparently been that important to someone mm. more important than you ever expected it being to somebody else outside of yourself and you're like oh god do i have does every song i write have to hold that weight mm. to people like am i really like responsible for giving people that thing that they're going to hold on to for comfort and like no you're not you're not as an artist you're not responsible no. for it but no. you it's no obligation what, no no it yeah. still feeds into the the mindset you can't help like, but think it yeah yeah. yeah yeah and it does it does frustrate me sometimes when i like that's why like you know I hear some bands who say say things about like oh yeah the primary reason we write music is to help people and i'm kind of like that's that's admirable but i don't understand it because you can never know the, the song the writing is going to help yeah. someone or yeah. not yeah. you know like at the end of the day you've got to write for yourself first yeah. I think there's something really admirable about it but it's just oh, kind of uh, maybe confusing oh to me sometimes Ooh. like it's a oh, good looking delivery person <laughs> I agree <laughs> as a kid when I'd eat white fish too much it'd give me a headache I don't know what it was a about headache. it yeah I'd eat okay. beer battered fish I'd have like you know half a fillet fine the rest of it headache within 20 minutes really I'm fine now but a lot of prawns Love. Mm. I, love, I love salmon. I like most seafood. Yeah. I like crab actually. Crab, crab, crab meat's oh. really good. But I feel bad for crabs. I was saying this to my partner. I, don't I, know saw, what it is. I saw a crab a video the other day of someone cooking a crab from live, and it was so. I just oh. feel bad for crabs. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Look at their little eyes sticking out. They're looking around everywhere. There's a part of me that was going to say like they seem like they're <laughs> smart, but like I know they're definitely not. Like they probably don't. I think they're smarter out of the cr crustaceans, but octopus though. Oh yeah, so mm. smart. See, but yeah. I love eating octopus. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of every time it do you every, taste the intelligence. Dude, every time I see, every time I see I a video of like, <laughs> oh, we should do either it. a video of someone cooking octopus or oh, a video of someone do. like you know, far, that. that's alright. A just video of someone oh, you know, like a yeah. conservationist or like a you know, a, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, like aquarium worker or something. Mm. <laughs> 
doing you know doing something with an octopus and there's all these comments and people like see this is why i'll never eat an octopus they're too intelligent look at them they're so beautiful how could you eat that and i'm like yeah. Have you tasted that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, it tastes someone's, pretty someone's fucking good, bro. <laughs> Who's the boys? Just eat makes the me. Th- it makes oh, me. Oh, yeah. oh God. Oh, no. the yeah. I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, but yes, you is did. it Thomas? <laughs> Timothy? Timothy. <laughs> You're right. What do you like? Names the octopus? Does yeah. Eat. Oh, no, man. He doesn't name the octopus. The octopus has a name. He isn't, tells him. Isn't there meant to be a new season coming out very soon? Dude, that is one of the best shows out it's there now. It's so good. The thing when he, when, he, when he wants to get the uh, the octopus to like get uh, involved with him and his girlfriend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, that is one of the shows that straddles the line like perfectly. Yeah, like, yeah. Where it's like we're an R eighteen show, and that means we're gonna go into this ground that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people. I feel like but that it's all and always sunny. Awesome. Oh, I don't sunny. know that. I need to watch more of that show. Yeah. They, I know, like the first couple of seasons, right? Like they push, they push the envelope so hard in terms of what you can get away with. Oh, it gets top. worse. Oh, it gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. Oh, I do need to watch it. Mm. Oh, so this is so seasons good. More. Yeah, this is really good. How many seasons? Yeah, it's like... Shout out it's to... Never what was this running yeah, where, where was this from? Wow. Whatever. It just um, says pizza, does it? Sapori. Uh, sitcom style thing. They're, they're, they're Sapori. Now got the record. Italia. Italia. Wow. You guys are sick. This yeah. pizza's good. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I, you're not watching. Wood fire. Can't you, they might be watching. You'd be surprised. You just go, just go into the shop one day with the USB. Watch this. And we, <laughs> we thank you so much. And around like the 42 minute mark is a thing for you. <laughs> you guys hey. need content? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I bet you didn't expect Golf Man to pop up talking about Polaris. <laughs> Golf Man. Golf. What's his name? Yeah. Um, it's the Vic- new superhero. It's, it's Golf Victor someone. Man. Victor someone. Victor Crumb. I, I, I had it up on my phone. Victor my dad knows him. I'll tell you what. <laughs> When I showed my dad, he was chuffed. He was like, oh, we, wow, we you got, should send him a record. You do should... we should invite him out to the show in America? Yeah, yeah, I'll hit him up. Yeah, I'll do it. it. Mm. That's fucking great. That would be sick. Yeah. I'd cool. be stoked with that. There's if a lot of people There's a lot of people like that I've been meaning. There's like, I just, now we're going the to America, PGA there's so many people it. I just want to hear up and be like, hey, I don't know if you care about metal music, but do you want to come to my show because I think you're really cool? Like, yeah. <laughs> See, I don't want to do that because I feel like people will be like, metal. What you're saying is we should DM Margot Robbie and be like, hey, you like metal? Come out to a show. Margot Robbie, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa was at the final Slayer show. The thing is, we don't even need really? to message. Yeah. You don't even need to message Margot Robbie and be like, "Hey, Margot, do you like metalcore?" Because you know she does. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's so, so. Yeah. Have you heard of us? <laughs> yeah. We're like bullet for my Valentine, but better. You see that video of her losing it <laughs> with um, them out... like shouting her out on stage or dedicating yeah. yeah. tears yeah. don't fall to her, and she's like, "Oh my fucking god!" Yeah. It's and cool. then the, uh, what's it called the um, Corey. <laughs> Corey Taylor yes, uh, like done, doing a video I was literally just thinking yeah. Corey Worthington the whole time in my brain I was like get, get out of Corey, my you, mind you had, you had the first day that's Why all you, you need back? get those sunglasses out of my face <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> such an obscure reference that only Australian fans will get dude the amount of times I've had to explain the Corey Worthington story to like someone from overseas in mm. the context of like a story be like you look People like Corey Worthington that, though. They just don't know the name Corey Worthington yeah. yeah that would become a meme like, yeah. people knew about that dude yeah what was his like deal like what? Like what was like the? He like, the what, party. Yeah, but he what was what was like the stinger of it? Like what was the sting was they interviewed him on and he wouldn't take his sunglasses off. No, he, they, the he wouldn't take his sunglasses off. And then they're like, the anything you want to say? And he's like, invite me to three of your parties. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. a pretty badass <laughs> report at the end. He Honestly, like he played that well. Wilder. So fun <laughs> p- f- story about him. <coughs> he did the second season of Ninja Warrior with me. Really? You did Ninja Warrior? I did the first two seasons. Did you? Yeah. As a competitor, yeah, wow! I made the final the first year. That's so sick. Now, okay, so I know, Fuck yeah. I know three people have done Ninja Warrior. That's wild. I can. Actually, uh, speaking of old TV shows, I just delved back into my love for Robot Wars. Did any of you guys ever oh, watch yeah. Robot We've Wars? Yeah. Holy shit! I've been Hypnodisc. watching it on on yeah Hypnodisc Chaos Two. Ah! See, there was a, just a like all I've been watching this past week. Like when I get a moment to put anything off, just, just YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, so. Robot Wars YouTube. There's a there's a playlist of all of the seasons on it because I looked it up on online. Oh, like they, Red Dwarf there's two it? seasons on Netflix, but it's like the newer season. Like, yeah. I, don't care. I want the OG shit. Yeah. I want like what I remember, what like the nostalgia for me. Like that's oh, what dude, I was some so of those good. new robots. I'm, 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 I'm saving. Yeah. Some Craig, of them are Craig, busted. Um, it's so Craig, sad when you like Craig something. Um, Craig Matthew, yeah, there's Craig like some... one robot. Oh, he, like, was he was on Red Disc, a flamethrower, and like pincers, and then the other one's got the I've saved the playlist. We gotta watch this shit. We're on to it. We gotta watch it. Oh no, he's so the fuel valve, and the other one's just like flaming all over the place. Some of the commentary, it's just so comical too. Like, what was the what was the one? There was the. You know how they had like the boss robots that just so roll kill around? a lot, so kill a lot, so kill a lot. Oh my god, you are taking um, me to a place. <laughs> remember, um, um, Matilda was it? Matilda was one of them. Remember Je- Robo Sora Shunt. Rex at the um yeah. at the Easter show? Oh yeah, that was cool. It was like mm. yeah. And I remember what is it on the Simpsons where it's like Robo Rex voiced by um 
Al Pacino. It's like, I don't know. Oh, he went with the guys, I don't know whether to cook you or eat you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hold the car. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. No, so, yeah, I think uh, Jake and I had discovered a few years ago that we had both collected that. There's this magazine, you guys might have remembered, it was called, like, Real Robots or something. Yeah. One of those subscription mags. And you every build a robot? robot. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah, you that did too. It too didn't yeah. You? yeah. Every week you got every week you got a couple of parts, yeah. and you would you would hold out like waiting and waiting, and sometimes they'd really fuck with you. You get like it was like once a fortnight, dude. Yeah, once yeah, a yeah. fortnight. You'd, you'd yeah. be waiting around and you'd be like, oh boy, new parts, and then they've just given you the screws. Yeah, and then the part the, the part you were waiting <laughs> for so is, four, is four issues away, <laughs> yeah. and you're sitting there like, oh boy, screws. Dude, I saw a commercial for one of those the other day. Great it was marketing. Like, it was building the Batmobile, and it was like you know a Batmobile like this big or whatever, and it's like you get all the pieces. I read the fine print at the end. It was like minimum spend two and a half thousand dollars. And I was like, stop it. I'm in. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, not only is it two and a half thousand dollars, but you've also got to wait like two and a half years to finish it. Yeah. Oh. Man, as a kid, that shit was so good. Like when you finally built the robot and you're like, holy shit, I've, I've done this all myself. But no they made help. sure you never felt like it was done. No. So they'd be like, oh, you finished the robot? Cool. Now we're going to teach it to play soccer. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and now, and now in, in another three months time, we'll be able to make it do this and yeah. do that. But you know. Oh. I had that with a dinosaur. I had like, and it was bits of bones that made like a skeleton. Mm. That's cool. I had that, but it didn't do anything. It was just a skeleton. Just I think I had that. I don't know if that was like an issue. Thing, like but I, I definitely had a T-Rex skeleton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was I think I had a stegosaurus skeleton as well. The wood oh, one. That's, yeah, wood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was the same thing. And I also had the, um, what's it called? The big dinosaur like bifold book, like the big yeah. binder yep. that you'd like fill out all the pages of. I got that. The, the blue binder. Have I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. I had the exact same one. And you can't tell them. They'll never, they'll never understand. But in saying that, like it does make me happy to hear that like as lame as it is, like makes me happy to hear that like things like that like that Batmobile thing they still make that shit like it's yeah. not like it's yeah. just a giant rot now yeah I mean didn't know it was always a giant rot <laughs> but like it's just like yeah it sounds very nostalgic but like it's kind of cool that that hasn't disappeared because mm. like that stuff was exciting when we yeah hell yeah mm. I'm, or I'm already guilty of just assuming that all kids do all day now is play iPad that's I'm, I'm that old now but that's how my the iPad works. generation it does seem like enough of my friends have kids after a while, you need the iPad. Like, I mean, yeah, like, it's like, mm, we need there was no different for us is that we're in front of a TV. We didn't, there was no such thing as an iPad. But yeah. not to the same were, extent, man. Yeah. Like, no, no, it's definitely yeah. not, it's not as accessible. T TV, as TV came I 100% agree. Hours, the other thing yeah. Yeah. with TV was, that, like, you didn't have choice. Yeah. It yeah. was like, if there it's was not no on Netflix, Channel none of 7 that. at 6 o'clock when yeah, you get exactly. your half an hour TV. You missed your show, you got to wait till next week. You watch it in the morning, you watch it for, you know... 45 to an hour and a half when you get home and then it's into adult time and you're like all right and like now there's obviously like abc two and three yeah. whatever else where yeah. it's like kids all day but oh so that's yeah. it is so oh. hard to keep kids off your ipads man like yeah. it is so fucking hard yeah because all their friends are doing it and you don't want them to miss out you don't want to be the parent that whose kid goes to school and doesn't get to talk about what's current but yeah. at the same time it's like <clears> what <throat> my kid going to school talking about all these fucking stupid YouTube shorts mm. and TikToks and things. I have to say, live, live. I was that kid that missed out. I didn't have any gaming consoles growing up and all my friends did. All he had was weights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the gym, Nathan. It's 5am. You've been, like, you've you been like, swell <laughs> since 6, man. Yeah. Have you played Spyro? It's like, you're have taking you taken your deadline? creatine? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, creatine in the baby bottle. Like... <laughs> He was uh, Ben Stiller off uh, yeah. Dodgeball. Yeah. She's like, you want that pizza fatty? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> As a six-year-old? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Michelle. But I didn't have games. And I didn't feel like I missed out from that. And I'm actually looking back and I'm being like, I'm glad I didn't have that. Because it made me probably be more creative. And like, go and do... Cre like, I used to like, play fucking dinosaurs myself way out the back. Like, more imaginative you Just things. imagine you at like eight years old just walking around the backyard by yourself going... Dude, you know, you know the scene in Step Brothers where he goes, when I was a kid, I just wanted to be a dinosaur. All over that. Everyone in the neighborhood was terrified Don't of me. Don't lose your dinosaur. Yeah. But actually, I feel like he that, still that hasn't lost made it. me be creative because I didn't have that, like, zone out, play that game all the time. Mm. I still get to play when I went to friends' houses and stuff. But yeah. I, feel like I never felt like I was missing out either. I feel like it's so different, though, with, in this day and age with... Like, for, for kids and, like, what their accessibility to everything. Like, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Libby... Asked us if um, we could get her on this ch children's social media app. I think it's called Zigazoo or some. I, like I, I, I think that's like what it's Pokemon. called. And it, it, it's essentially like a kid safe TikTok. Okay. To my end. Like, the, Tori did a bunch of research on it, made sure it was all good. Like, all of her friends have got it. And it's like, uh, 
full on say for kid, you know kids. How old she now? And she's ten. Yeah. yeah, and we were like, oh, I don't know. And she's like, all my friends have got it. Blah blah blah. I'm like, well, we don't want her to be the one that doesn't have it when doesn't every kid it, yeah. has an iPad. Yeah. Everyone is on. Yeah. You know, she's. On, I don't. Even, I can't keep up with the apps and everything that she's on, but. Going, like, you know, you were saying you feel like you didn't really miss out, but, like, I feel like in this day and age, if it, it's just, it's so different now. Like, I, I, I can't even keep up with technology yeah. for myself, let alone for, for her. Like I think because it's, like, social media is a different thing. It's not like <laughs> playing a game that you, like, you went to school and you talked about it. Yeah. They're actually communicating with their friends. I, I, I finally yeah. beat this mission on GTA last yeah. night. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did that too. Like, it's yeah. nothing like that. I think that the, the equivalent, the equivalent yeah. to us is probably, like, you know, when you were, when you were, like, 11 and we all got, like, MSN. And you had a one computer in the house, yeah, and it was like when your mum yeah. was like, I, "You need to get off the computer and do." So your I can make a phone call. Yeah, yeah, get off the dialer. When well, we got that second line put in the, uh, yeah. the house, it was so sad. <laughs> Shit was on. <laughs> yeah, but no, but that I'll was like that thing where day. you'd be like, but, um, "Like, I'm, you're getting FOMO because you can't stop this group chat with your friends on yeah. MSN, and it was like you can't yeah. possibly get off." And you know, if you're the first one to leave, you're going to get ripped on. Oh yeah. I've just perfected my bio <laughs> or whatever yeah. it is. I chose the perfect song lyrics. For my yeah, song. I just <laughs> and I typed them out with you know like oh, uppercase, lowercase, yeah, uppercase. Yeah. <laughs> Customizing MySpaces was. Oh my time. god! And your, your top five friends or Wait, whatever it was. A, here's a good top song. Eight. I'm interviewing you now. Yeah, top eight. What's uh, what was your? My, tell me some of your oh, MySpace yeah. songs. Mine was hidden, so no one knew. MySpace songs. What was on okay. your MySpace profile? Oh. Yeah, you were smart. <laughs> I was a couple. Had he, but. I was. Do you know my, my name was is Nathan. On I do know media? that. Yeah, I that came this. from MySpace. That was my original MySpace name. Nice. Because you used to have like Dan, Dylan Hunger. I used to remember you. I used to know you as is Nathan. Mm. Like oh, in my uh, like yeah, 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 yeah in my in my head I was like yeah that's that's is Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> that came from MySpace. That was my original MySpace set, and I had Instagram so early. That's like your gamer tag. <laughs> Dude, thing. Yeah, I got yeah. Instagram like when it first came out. Didn't understand it. Deleted it. A couple of months later, everyone was going on about it. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna fucking redownload this. That was me app. to Facebook because I'm like. Nah, MySpace is where it at, where it's at. Yeah. This is never oh, taken off. I was so late to Facebook <laughs> Me and my too. Friends, like, Facebook's yeah. for old people. Facebook's for old people. <laughs> it was when it I mean, it is now. And now it's a Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone you full can't even have a song on young your young profile. That's lame. lame. Yeah. 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 That's so lame. But I was dancing. Well, you can't like customize it. It's all white and blue. Songs oh, on um songs on yeah, MySpace. I was the guy who I like to listen to a lot of emo, but like my song profiles were always things like. Poison the Well or 18 Visions, like the heaviest the shit. Oh, 18 to. Visions. Yes. Oh yeah. my god, what a band! Tough to come what and see band. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, terror, you, hate breed. You wanted to be respected <laughs> yeah. for your hard music. Exactly. Yeah. I would have been like a Ben Sevenfold. Picture was me in like camo shorts. Like I definitely had, had a holy confession. Did you ever delete your MySpace? Has everyone still got theirs? Still got it. I mean, I don't think it exists anymore, right? Just no, it does. I think they're yeah. You can search it. Uh, hey, let, let's, let's do a whip around. You want to know let's what's see pathetic? everyone's MySpace. It's my, I, my I had a joint one with a girlfriend. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, yep. no. Fuck you guys. Yep. I know it sucks. <laughs> Early codependency issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I had five months by Parkway for a while as well. I remember, I remember discovering the melodic stuff by Parkway. Oh, I and being when like, we toured with them and they just, played yeah. that song. Oh, took me right back to MySpace. Yeah. Okay, let's the fact, go, the let's fact go. that that is not like a fixture in their set still upsets me and always will. <laughs> I mean, that song songs. is one of the think best. I think it's one of the best songs they They play that right. song like a dozen times in their career almost. Yeah. Like. yeah. And you felt, I felt like the... Maybe it was just, maybe it's my personal bias because I loved it and we were all so excited. But I felt like everyone in the room was psyched. Like, yeah, it's a cool song. I think it's a I think it's like a dark horse favorite. That was like yeah. the, for the ten year though. The YouTube, right? yeah. yeah, the horizons to it. Yeah, that riff gives me chills when I think. It's there, but it won't load so anything. Good. You giving the same thing? Mm. Mine's just come up with blank stuff. Mine's I can't just even remember not like, loading. It I can't sign in because I don't know. What I wouldn't know what is, my... but like it's public, so you can see it. Okay. I can't believe it's actually still. Yeah, there. I thought they took that shit off. Yeah, remember it went to. Like after people started jumping ship to Facebook, featured content on it MySpace. became like a thing for bands. Yeah, it was a music thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm. yeah, they were like, well, all the MySpace era bands got massive. This will keep us afloat. Mm. Do you remember well, the days? You remember the days when up, you'd, you'd change your MySpace name to say like, you know, let's let's yeah. say my name was X my Johnny X. No, no. If you're, if you're <laughs> in a band, <laughs> <laughs> no if, idea. If what you're in a band called like you know Ashes of the Hot Tub or whatever, it'd be like Ashes of the Hot Tub, and then in brackets on tour you know when they were <laughs> and the best part was the tour was three days spread over three weekends as yeah. well and then it'd be like acting as if like yeah we've been on the road for three weeks and, and they that? went they went from sydney to newcastle maybe then, canberra yeah and then to canberra and back or it might have even been like sydney penrith yeah <laughs> and the Wollongong. embassy yeah and, the embassy and come back like 
posting the photo with the high ace packed like quarter full. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff you do when you're a young band. Oh, just we're out to for a two hour drive hilarious. out to Blackstone. Like, we did, we did all, all the same shit. Like any excuse we had to use the van to go to a show. Did you ever have rather like, than the band name cars? with your name in it, like Johnny Shotgun? No, we're, we're, we've never done that. Oh, you had to, didn't you? I had to. Were, were you <laughs> sorry? Explain. Well, shotgun what? <laughs> so shotgun supremacy years ago. Oh, better than that. It no? was this shotgun, shotgun kiss. Silence? Screamo band This shotgun, kid. shotgun kiss Yeah That was Johnny's band <laughs> That's a good yeah. <laughs> That's By the way I'm... I have to say this Johnny was like a cool dude When I was young, I don't believe you I love that you said was <laughs> We all know him now When I My first interaction And he doesn't know this uh, well, he, No you know the story But yeah. you didn't know me at the time I was like a 16 year old kid At a concert And Johnny With his shirt off I had a fucking shirt on. Bro. I only jumped down. <laughs> had no sleeves though. Sleeves. And was Johnny tab, was there talking it? to a girl, and he was talking about his new screaming style to her and demonstrating his new screaming. <laughs> but I thought it was the fucking coolest thing in the world. I was like, he's talking to this girl, and he's like showing how he screams now because I knew who he was from the band. It's like, yeah. So I used to do a fry scream. That's kind exactly of like, what it's like. And then, I'm, and then I started learning a bit of raw. And then, dude. It's, you were there. You yeah. know, you know. I used to, I used to see that. Like, so, we, uh, yeah. I mean, these guys would would have seen some of this as well. Was the um the Janali Youth Hall shows, mm-hmm. so, like Janali Community Center, which is like literally five minutes from where we are right now. Um, and I, because I grew up five minutes away as well mm. from here. Um, and that was where a lot of the the local stuff was held. And like, they used to do the local Battle of the Bands. There it was a Southern Shire Battle of the Bands. Was like my introduction to local shows. Was a Battle of the Bands. Yeah. But then they would hold out like hardcore bands would come through. Like Amity Affliction played this fucking tiny youth hall once and like yeah and like and like there would be like american hardcore bands i played there in my old band for yes, battle of bands yes. yeah we tried and to the, play there so hard we tried yeah. to play yeah. it oh, really? the council Houses wouldn't give it to very us often. look at us now you we've, fucks we've, we've, but, we've, but that was running no, a karate no, no, this club was like in a there few years ago yeah, we were like let's oh. do a crazy one-off show this at was the like place four, where five we years ago yeah yeah and we were just like try to clear it with council try to clear it with the locals and it's like yes 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 no yeah just like straight but this no. is this is the thing, right? Is that I think the reason shows stopped happening there is because the locals would complain because like noise. It was fucked. They'd have these. It was a bit fucked, but they you know you'd have all these you'd have these teenagers coming out and they're all and they're all dressed in black and studs and, and they got carrying like, on being loud, ridiculous, and they got their makeup on and they're like <laughs> you know and there was a little they'd all be they be all these like sixteen people year old smoking like cities on the corner. Yeah, people coming out <laughs> bleeding from the venues and stuff. I saw genuine fights go down in there. Yeah, yeah. and like. But people would, yeah, people would come up out all fucked up and you'd have teenagers like getting wasted in the park across the road before the show and like... I'm sure people's bins were getting stolen and... Yeah, yeah but um, my favourite memory of that <laughs> was, seeing, was seeing the like... Mum's going to be stoked. <laughs> <laughs> like the high school emos demonstrating their screaming to each other in between <laughs> sets. Like they're like in the park having smokes in between the show Fucking and they're hell. like practising their screaming because they're among their people, they're among their tribe, yeah. right? So it's like yeah. this is a safe space so they're all over in the park just like... Rah! It's so fucking funny, and you would just hear it between sets, and it's like there's. It's so funny to laugh about, but when I look back at it, it's really nostalgic. It's like there's. It's sad. It was a time. That was our culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was the local metalcore. That's where where we all come from. (laughs) Some people couldn't do it. Other people could do it. You're like, damn, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them is in our band now. (laughs) (laughs) The other one. (laughs) But that's the thing, though. Like, you know, and obviously to show my age. When I first started doing that shit, the Beatles had just started. <laughs> so I was like, oh. "Check this out, <laughs> Buddy Holly and the Crickets." Yeah. <laughs> but that yeah, was the thing; like, no one, space. no one was really doing it that mm. much, and it was yeah. weird for people if that was their first introduction to number one local bands and heavy music or screamo or emo music. I was like, "Oh, this is super weird." Like, we never heard people do that. So, unless mm. you were, because it was before the internet and stuff, unless you were kind of entrenched in the heavy music scene. And what was it, you know, back then it was like shit like Sepultura and, you know, stuff like that. You didn't really know that that was a thing that people could do. Yeah. It felt very removed from you, right? Yeah. I think that's that's why though, that's why this, these local shows were important because like, and it's, it's kind of, it all comes down like, it's exactly the same reason, like on a larger scale where things like the Parkway DVD was important and stuff. Because like to kids like us in high school, like, yeah, you're, you're a fan of heavy music and stuff, but these people seem so much larger than life. They seem... They seem massive. They seem untouchable. Like I remember seeing my first metal show and just it's being like, like, it's like these are like rock gods like, on the you stage. You know, like movie stars. Like you think yeah. that they are 
that that I'm human. I've never seen being, the untouchable. They're these magical awe. people, like yeah, we're like all just normal fucking human beings. And that's <laughs> like, you guys now. I'm no different you guys to anyone. Now. Else, you know, now, like we're no that's different that's to anyone. That is you guys, two it's friends not. of mine. When do, when <laughs> friends that were like we were genuinely like we're just shit cunts from the Sutherland Shire, bro. I know you suck. Thank you. That's you guys to my son. You know what I mean, like. Yeah. Parkway Drive, Polaris, and Architects. To him, it's like you guys are just like that's God. That's, yeah, <laughs> like, that's, and, unless it's a movie star, like that's you know in Ryan Captain Man's, America yeah. or something like that. Tom that's, Cruise. That's I was about to say Tom Cruise. Not even Tom Cruise. It, it, Marvel and Star Wars and shit. Like yeah. you know yeah. what I mean. Oh, Jason Momoa and stuff. Guys like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But I yeah. I mean, I used to. I remember. Yeah, I was seeing <laughs> my Valentine a big day out when I was fifteen, and I was like. The, I was like in awe of these guys walking on stage. Like these guys are so famous. This is the biggest, the biggest thing I've ever seen. Mm. And mm. then like, but I think like it's necessary. Like you don't really like. Yeah, don't get me wrong. At that time, I was I was planning on doing this. This was the plan, but it didn't seem as it didn't seem like there was a path laid out. You know yeah. what I mean? I was like, how do you do this as a kid? Like, yeah. And I think like I was even saying to someone the other day, I was like, I think young people need to see they need to see shitty bands. And they yeah. need to see good local bands. Yeah. But yeah. They, they also, the other thing is though, they can't just see good local bands because then it still feels untouchable. You need to see some bands that aren't that good. Yeah. That's how you know that you can do it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Otherwise, if everybody seems untouchable, then you're a couple of years away from getting up there. But you'll see some bands and you're like, these guys have only rehearsed a few times. They're getting up there and having a shot and it tells you, I could probably do it better. That's why and it kind of sucks. It, like, it kind of sucks. Like it's, it's so great we're having this big, massive resurgence of heavy music, mm. especially like hardcore metalcore, that sort of stuff. But it kind of sucks that there's not the scene like there was oh, yeah. 10 years ago. Well, you know, we talk about that a lot. We've, we've had yeah. this conversation so many times over the that's years. Why like, that's why we love this The shit. scene is, is bigger and stronger than ever, I, I'd say. But at the same time, like, local. locally, no, like, shows aren't grassroots. a thing yeah. like, no, to, to this is the degree that, like it used well. to be. Exactly. It's like, changed so much in the 10 years we've all been. All ages shows like, are few and far between as well. Like It's rough because it's like, especially for us, it's like hard to kind of ground yourself in it and try to figure out exactly where the scene is at because it's like, We've grown and had fans grow with us, but it's like some of those fans, we might be the only heavy band that they listen to. They might yeah. be Triple J listeners. They might be, you know, just stumbled onto one song and love that. Yeah. And it's like, we don't know what's going on in our local venues unless we go down and pop by. And it's like, you see people, you see some repeat people and you do see new people and young people getting into it. But it's like, there's definitely waves of it. Like, Well, the, the other yeah. thing is like, I get out, I get out to a lot of shows, but I, it's very rare for me to find shows like, you know, I'll go, I'll go to shows at Crowbar or like or whatever, like the Red Rattler and stuff like that. that but, by the way, the sick thing time. I think is that like, we've, because we go to almost every yeah. show, the amount of shows that we've seen you boys at is fucking great. Well, I mean, because yeah, I've never stopped. Yeah. Never stopped going You're going to a show like, this Saturday. Oh wait. Yeah, this Saturday. I'm going to show on one. Thursday. Are you That's not right. going to the um, something fest? I don't know. It's like Steps on and uh, Above Below and... Oh, Grace, sick. I'll Grave try to get Ocean Sleeper playing at that one. Grave Mind Ocean oh, Sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about the What's volume show? No, no, no. Oh, no, that's it's like different. A, it's like a mini Something fest. Something fest. In, uh, in Peril fest. Yeah, yeah. There you go, yeah. Oh, okay, you know, because there's a volume show that's a mini fest as well. That's in, like, October, I think. I'm going to yeah, some dates yeah. up. But, like, yeah, I mean, we'll go... Yeah, I mean, we, we try to go out to lots of shows and stuff, and I love I like those venues. I like the people that go there. But what's interesting is that it's very rare these days for me to go and see a local show a, a local show that's actually a local show where all the bands are local yeah. usually these days I'm going out to see a friend's band who is coming from another state on tour or like I'm going out to yeah or maybe it's or it might be like a one off show from you know a friend's band like like I saw To The Grave recently or Justice of the Damned and these are touring bands who are doing like a a local handful show. of sh yeah a more local show yeah. but I mean in the case of I mean in the case of To The Grave it's part of a tour as well but like yeah, the usually, they're, usually they're doing a run people aren't putting on one off little one -off weekend shows, shows. Yeah. Do you think we, because we, the bands you're associating with like, you're a bigger band now like I said you're that no, band it's just not there man I know it's not it's, it's not as much as it was yeah. for us growing up but I'm sure there definitely there are is, local shows. Don't get me wrong, are, and I, I try to I like, try to keep my ear to the ground on them. But I guess what I'm saying is they're not as many. Like we're yeah. so just for an example, and I've probably said this in multiple interviews before. But well, don't when we say it. we're no, not exclusive. You want shit. exclusives? <laughs> no, I'm going to say it anyway. All right. But we like when we started the band, we probably played in our first year. We probably played close to 30 shows in Sydney in a year, which yeah. is completely. I, think I remember a number, and it was 36. It was 30 something, yeah, right? Yeah, like it was like it was yeah. a ridiculous number of shows to play in one season. Anyone would tell you this. That. They were all in New South Wales. They yeah. were all in like the greatest Sydney They were within an hour yeah. of Sydney, all yeah. of them. Yeah. Well, like, the first time I ever here. heard of you guys was <coughs> fucking years ago now. And you guys were playing under my mate's band, Mark My Words, at one of those yep. small shows. Oh, yeah. And they're like, dude, we played with a band tonight that you would fucking love. They're called That's Polaris, funny. check them out. And 
I think you said only just maybe dropped the EP, or I don't even know if you Probably, had dropped yeah, the EP. Probably, yeah, that would have yet. been 2015-16. So yeah. yeah. And I was just like, oh, you guys know me very well. I remember I that name, yeah. <laughs> Off my words. It's crazy. Yeah. But like, but that was that was the thing, is we played we played everywhere we could, we took every opportunity. And so one of those things, like a lot of people would say, don't do that. Don't play 30 shows in a year, because no mm. one's going to come and see you. And like, there is definitely, somewhere. There's definitely an argument to that, but like when I've, when I've talked to like, friends who are starting new bands or like you know whether it's like we've got like four minutes of memory on that one but i've got more cards that's fine yeah also that one's really good so we're fine (laughs) yeah like when i'm talking to even say like you know some of my drum students and stuff like that who are starting bands and trying to figure out how to negotiate the the early stages of being a local band and stuff and i'm kind of like literally jump on every bill that you can don't worry about and this is some people would say this is bad advice this is just what worked for us this is literally all we know that works so it's like you, you jump on every bill that you can in that first year and don't worry about the fact that the same people aren't going to see you last weekend and this weekend. Like it doesn't matter because you're getting better as a band. It also and then after, and after you've done that for a year, then you can become selective about what you take and you can start trying to bring all of your fans to each show by spreading them out. But like, you know, bro, yeah, no, no. trying to, try to convince all your friends to come out, trying to concentrate all your friends into one gig when your band isn't even that good yet. Like that might be, they might never come again. Yeah, it's yeah. better to just play, you know, bring them out to the important ones, but yeah. then like the rest just get good as a band and then a year or two down the track, your friends are going to realize you're worth seeing. Yeah. If you'll and, stick it out, your friends will stick it out. Like yeah, my my and, friends now, we announce a show and they're like, oh, can I get on the door? Can I come out? Like, yeah. they're, they're so G'd, but like four or five years ago, they couldn't care less about coming out there. Yeah, but don't I, you love that? A couple of them might the door. Co- yeah. I mean, like, well, to be fair, I offer it to them because I'm like, oh, well, yeah. there's like 12 of you. And, I mean, that's I us. These days, I try to only give door spots out to people who've paid for a ticket once in the past. I'm yeah. like, yeah. if you've never come, we've been a band for 10 years, if you've never come to a show and paid for a ticket, then... Yeah pay for the ticket yeah. if you've <laughs> if you've got multiple once, damn it. yeah just literally support us once like that's fair, fine but my, these... my boys buy merch Thanks yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Your friends always. Your friends do rock the merch. They're yeah. good with it. So you do, just look at the camera that, that he turned off. So look at that one. Oh, that's no, right. that one's on. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he oh, turned it off and then back on. But I think. Ah. I think what the hard thing is. I these heard days, that about a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. the card, What I'm what I'm seeing now is like, and I've I think this is just like the the sad state that newer bands are finding themselves in and I look at a lot of bands I'm like I can see a lot of local bands struggling to break out of the local stage and I really feel for them it's not their fault because the fact of the matter is there are not enough shows around for them to get the experience to take the next step like yeah, for sure. if you only played five shows in a year how are you improving as a band like that's that's the hardest thing and like if there's no back in do you remember when every Every fifteen-year-old was a promoter. Yeah, you remember those days? Yeah, yeah. it was honestly. It was, it, was, it, was, it was. It was like it was a really good thing for the scene. Like sometimes, sometimes it was. You know, you, you we played a lot of shows with people that shouldn't have been running shows. <laughs> but at the same but time, that was the lifeblood of the yeah. of because the, it didn't of the local matter. Show of, it of, didn't matter. That's it. I'm becoming starting a, a fucking band and every. You know, like it you're was, not busy enough. You look back at it and you go, "Fuck, that was a shit show." But like this, the, the, or, but it just. It's where you come from. Also, it didn't matter. Start somewhere. Did we, like... did we ever really like you know that first that first year of playing shows? We probably didn't. We probably got paid for like three of them. Like yeah. we never. I don't think we ever came out of a show going fuck that show. That promoter sucked. We'll never play one of his shows again because we were literally. It was just a room to play in, and that was it. And mm, it's like yeah. whoever's that there was, that sees you, whoever's there is meant to be there. You know, you these know, people like... had no idea how to do business. They were having to have their parents put down their credit cards to book <laughs> venues. Like it was really funny. And like looking back on it, it's a really good memory. It's like people would go to any lengths to be like a booking agent or a, or a promoter. If they weren't in a band, they just wanted to be part of the scene. And that was really great for the scene in a lot of ways. There were downsides to it, but like it grew. And some of those people still run shows now, Yeah, which is crazy when you think about it. Like Man, some, some, some of them are those, genuine some agents. Some of those kids stuff. turn out like, to be Ash from Destroy All Lines. I was going to say, yeah, it's like, look at Ash Hall. Like, still a kid. He's still a kid, still running yeah, shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love you, Ash. Still looks 16. <laughs> but the great thing about it was that, yeah, sure, some of those shows were an absolute shit fight, but like you still had a good time. You met heaps of bands. We met oh, new yeah. bands every weekend. Some mm. of those bands, like when you talk about when you talk about uh, To the Grave and Justice for the Damned, are bands that we are still going now that we met from literally like week one in Sydney, we were playing with those kinds of bands. Like they've been around as long as we have and we still see them out there. And it's yeah. like, that was how we, that was how we networked back then. And, and now it's kind of like up to like, cause there's no local scene in terms of live music. It's kind of up to friends taking younger siblings along to a gig or kids, yeah. like mm. people taking, like parents taking their kids along. And it's like, I think about, I think about the shows I went to and the, the scene that we had and the shows that I found and local venues, youth centers and stuff like that. And then I think, 
what shows has my son been to? Like, he's been to, like, The Ghost Inside, Parkway, Kill Switch, Alice Cooper, yeah, Kiss. Like, that, but that's the thing. It's like, but to it's an extent, amazing. that kind of sucks because it's like, that's the only level. There's this no is stepping seeing. stone. You need yeah. to Where's see the shit stepping bands? stone? There's this no, my, yeah. It's like, yeah. There's no he entry that, level. He there's was no drums for a few years and he's kind of moved away from it now. But when you're learning an instrument and that's like, well, where's the stepping stone to get to that point? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't see when any you're watching avenue. the untouchable, yeah. it's like, it's yeah. like, it needs to well, be accessible. You see people yeah. online doing it and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, it, the thing it, is, when we were, yeah. when we were in Janali Youth Centre, you're looking up and you're like, that's, that guy's three years older than me yeah. and he's put together a band with his high school friends. I yeah. can do that. I'm in the process of doing that. In a couple of years, we will literally be on that stage. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy to envision and it's the same thing with like a local hardcore gig or something like that. It's like, yeah, this is like, a youth center with like two floodlights in it and that's it and a horrible PA and it doesn't matter that they're not professional because kids are moshing and I think to me the big thing was going to those local shows and you know I had I had I started my first like Blink-182 and Green Day cover band when I was like 11 and we played those kinds of like little you know young people's band night showcase type of things at the local hall and stuff but no one was moving you know it's mostly parents sitting yeah. around going to a show and seeing like some bands that were great, some bands that were really average, but kids were just pitting. That was the most exciting thing yeah. I'd ever seen. And I was like, oh, they will do that if we make a band. Like, that was... that was So that was your band. first band? It was like a Blink-182 Green Day cover band? Started my first band in year six, and we did... Um, yeah, we basically just played every Green Day and Blink song that we could. That was about the mission. And then Jamie? it evolved to, like, Avenged Sevenfold and stuff a bit later. <laughs> but first band. Uh, it was a band called Oriana. I was a guitarist and backup vocals and singing. And it mainly formed from, like, high school with, like, mates from school. And, uh, yeah, so we made an EP. It's uh, pretty pretty bad. Played, played <laughs> it was recorded, and that's yeah. the mix. It was recorded, and we released yeah. it. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awful. Levels, what are they? <laughs> yeah. This it was, it was a time. It, it was, it was he's a trying time. To, he's trying to mix the kick, and he's like, yeah, can you keep hitting it so I can mix <laughs> yeah. it? Like, Hit it harder. We, we recorded it at my uh, at the time my ex-girlfriend's uh, mother's, like, holiday house down in Bulli, down in... Uh, no, sorry, Thoreau. Nice just like we just turn it into a studio and just record it off five songs and that's the precursor that's to that. us <laughs> precursor to us doing a South Coast yeah. holiday house yeah, for an exactly. album. Yeah. Rick, first band? Uh I jammed with a few guys, but this is pretty well my first band. Like the oh, first time fuck. I what a flex. Yeah. The, first time, the first time I ever played live was filling in for Jake's first band, which was um like a pop punk band. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I played uh, bass. So yeah. Yes. Nice. It was quite easy. We had started we had started Polaris. I don't think we had a name yet uh, maybe we did but we, we'd started it and then jake was like jake saw an opportunity to like try fronting this kind of like what was largely like an a day to remember type band yeah. well they so played was, two a day to remember songs in the set yeah <laughs> it was a, it was a heavy tinged pop punk band i think now the term is easy core is oh, yeah. Easy yeah. oh yeah i'm not a fan of i'm not a fan of that name i don't like the name but easy I like the genre. Genre. yeah um but they yeah it's he was doing that and yeah. Yeah, that was happening right around the... But they'd started playing shows before we had a band. And yeah. Rick, yeah, I remember... You, was it Liverpool you played? Yeah, Liverpool PCYC. Yeah. yeah. And I remember that day, I came off and I was like, that was pretty fun. And Jake came off being like, I'm going to leave this band. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah, I was like, sure, whatever. I'm like, Let's, we'll keep jamming. <laughs> That's oh, cool. Funny. Um, before I run out of memory cards, thing is we've talked for more than an hour on camera so far. Which, Damn, so. It's yeah, good luck. Go. There'd Good hangs, six, mate. Good seven, do you guys have an editor? Yeah, we don't need a camera. It's just an excuse to hang out. So we should talk about music, really. <laughs> yeah, I don't know because you are launching a fucking album in like a few days. So it's, for, is it we three want days to have now? A, a quick break. We'll have a clean up, toilet break. Yeah, I mean, yeah, may as well. Break. May yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Make me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs>